Well, praise the Lord, everyone. I don't know if you heard me or not. Praise the Lord, everyone. That's much better. Isn't it great to be in the house of the Lord tonight? Amen. If everybody would go ahead and stand, we're going to go into prayer tonight. We've got several requests. Let's remember Brother Gary Sellers, Brother and Sister Cutshaw, Brother Ricky Butler, Sister Hudson, Sister Lacey Hughes' mother, Paul Rollison, Sister Boren, the Eli Johnson family, uh, the Coon family. I don't know if anybody knows this family. I know Brother Tanner does. I work with um, one of this one of the members of this family, and there's several brothers. They lost their father last night. I believe it was last night in a car wreck, and I was told that he had a heart attack and died on the way to the hospital. I believe that is true, but that's what I was told by a few people today. He just finished spreading his mother's ashes just a couple of days ago, so he's lost both of his parents, all those brothers and children, and in just a couple of days. Let's lift that family up. I can't imagine. And Chase Burcham, let's remember him as well. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. If anybody has any requests, go ahead and lift your hand to heaven. You don't have to mention it, but God knows what's on your heart. Lift that other hand to heaven and believe that God's going to move for you tonight. Lord, God, I pray right now that every request that is going to heaven, I pray that you would look upon us, God. That you would allow us to know that you're moving right now. God, I pray that faith would begin to fill this room, God. I pray that every person here would begin to be encouraged in the Holy Ghost, knowing that they are not alone, knowing that this prayer request is getting answered in this moment, that you are moving in the midst, Lord. God, I pray that you would be with the Coon family tonight and every other request that we've made known. I pray your peace that surpasseth all understanding would surround this family, God. I pray that they would know that you are in the midst, that they would know you're there for them right now. God, we want your will here tonight. God, open our ears to receive the word and prepare our hearts, Lord, to worship you with sincerity and all that we have. For it's in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. At this time, if Sister Marcy would be making her way, she's going to sing a congregational for us. Let's worship with Sister Marcy. We have a birthday in the house today. Sister Sarah Pace. If you don't know uh, Chris and Sarah yet, well, you don't know what you're missing. You owe it to yourself to introduce yourself to them and uh, some of the greatest folks I've met in a, just a long, well, since I met Brother Nathan, I guess. <laughs> but we sure in it are enjoying them coming, being in ch church with us. And So let's sing happy birthday to Sister Sarah. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Sister Sarah. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> There's a blessed time that's coming, coming soon. There's a blessed time that's coming, coming soon. It may be evening, morning, or at noon. The wedding of the bride, united with the groom. We shall see the King when He comes. We shall see the King. We shall see the King. We shall see.
And we shall see the King when He comes. We shall see the King. We shall see the King. We shall see the King when He comes. He's coming in power. We'll hail the blessed hour. We shall see the King when He comes. Oh, we shall see the King. We shall see the King. to see the king I'm ready to look upon his face and see just who made me just who gave us this life just who allowed us to know those who love us to be able to exist it's all because of him tonight brother Keith's going to sing a special with us let's worship with brother Keith Get all these boys straight up here. I'm gonna do this old song. Old songs is all what I do best. That's, that's about what all I know is old songs. But I like the old songs. Something about the old songs, they just got, you know, they, they just got more meaning for me than the new songs do. Not anything against the new songs. I like a lot of the new songs, but my favorite's old songs. Because I am old, I guess. Probably the reason, but. This is a song Brother Lewis Harrow wrote years ago, Pentecostal preacher. Great song. Brother Don Johnson sung it for many, many years. Most everybody thought Brother Johnson wrote it, but uh, Brother Lewis Harrow wrote it. Anybody ever meet him? Not a soul. Brother Gene did, I think. Nell met him. Yeah, I met him. He was a great guy, but a great preacher. But anyway, he wrote this song. This song just seems to fit me. I don't know why, but it... Uh, Stephanie sung it when she was about three years old, uh, maybe three or four, at the Heisman homecoming. We've got videos of her singing this song. And uh, when I look back over the congregation, I see people just like me that's had problems and issues that they've come through. And you don't look back, as I told, told them Sunday, about Lot's wife looking back and turning into a pillar of salt. And a little boy in the Sunday school room said, my mama looked back and turned into a light pole. So, not that we look back to go back to those things, but if you'll look back at some of the places that we've come through, then you've got a lot to be thankful for. So that's kind of what this song is. When I face a trial or test, I know I've done my best. I know somehow the Lord will see me through. When temptations come my way, I get on my knees and pray. And I say, dear Lord, now it's up to you. Oh, when I look back down the road, where I lay my heavy load, and I think of all the victory. I've won, I've won Sometimes I get a thrill When I look back down the hill And I see just where The Lord has brought me from There's a valley down below No doubt I'll have to go Walk that lonely road again someday But it's not so bad down there There's lilies blooming everywhere And the Lord is traveling with me all the way Oh, when I look back down the road Where I lay my heavy load and I think of all the victories I've won, I've won. Sometimes I get a thrill when I look back down the hill. 
and I see just where the Lord has brought me from. There's a river wide and deep, a mountain tall and steep, but you know I've been this way before. I like this part. I'm much stronger, Lord, this time. And I know I'm going to make it fine. Cause that mountain, it don't bother me no more. Oh, when I look back down the road, where I lay my heavy load, and I think of all the victories I've won, oh, I've won. Sometimes I get a thrill when I look back down the hill and I see just where the Lord has brought me from. There's a river wide and deep, a mountain tall and steep. But you know, I've been this way before. And I'm much stronger, Lord, this time. And I know I'm going to make it fine. Because that mountain, it don't bother me no more. All the victories I've won, oh, I've won. Sometimes I get a thrill when I look back down the hill and I see just where the Lord has brought me from. where the Lord has brought me from. Oh, yeah. You know, during that song, I heard a whole lot of people singing out loud together. I'm just convinced that there's been some victories won in the house tonight. I'm just convinced that Satan does not have a stronghold over this congregation tonight. My, my, my. I'm thankful for the Lord tonight. At this time, we're going to go into our missions offering. And what greater of a time to give when you're thinking about the victories you've won. When you think about, when you look back down that road, don't the future look a whole lot brighter now? I'm thankful that I get to look forward to tomorrow because yesterday, it wasn't so good. Let's give as the Lord has given unto us tonight. Worship team is 
getting ready to lead us in worship tonight, I just want to read something to you real quick. The book of Titus, chapter 3, verse 3 and verse 4. For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving divers, lusts, and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. But after that, the kindness and love of God our Savior toward man appeared. And then verse 5. Not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to His mercy He saved us. By the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. I want to tell you tonight, if it's been a long time since you've prayed, maybe you need some renewing. Maybe tonight you need some regeneration. And I want to tell you, tonight God is no respecter of person, but He's no respecter of day nor time. Just this Wednesday night does not limit His power. Wednesday night service is just as powerful as Sunday night service. The same God that's on Sunday is the same God that's on Wednesday. And if you're in need tonight, I encourage you to go ahead and worship the Lord. Because there's power when you worship the Lord. Let's worship with the worship team.
of Jesus to break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus to break every chain. Break every chain, break every chain. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. There's an
Brother Ricky Butler, come forward. We're going to anoint him with oil at this time. He's got a checkup coming up on Friday. We want a good report. Come on, brethren, let's gather around him. Father, in Jesus' name. Come on, lift up a hand clap to him tonight. Hallelujah. God, you're worthy. Oh, you're so holy. Hallelujah. Feel a touch of the Holy Ghost in here tonight. Lift your hands in the house. I have your way here tonight, God. God, I feel your power in the room. God, I feel there's power here to drive out cancer in this building tonight. God, I feel there's power to heal diabetes. Cliff Lloyd, is Cliff Lloyd here tonight? So, a brethren, go, go grab Brother Cliff by the hand and bring him up here tonight. Let's have prayer for him. God's been touching his body slowly. I feel virtue in the house. Come on, brethren, once again. Oh, in the name of the Lord Jesus. God, we believe strength can come again to these legs. We believe he can gain complete control what this stroke has ruined in his body through the power of the Holy Ghost. We believe it tonight. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Father, from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet, I pray by your power and by your authority in the faith in the name of Jesus, we ask it, O God, such as we have, give I unto him, O Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, O oh Lord. Thank you, O oh Lord. Thank you, O oh Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. If you've been dealing with depression, lift your hand up now. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I curse the spirit of depression. I curse the spirit of fear and anxiety that would come against your people. I command it now in the name of Jesus to leave and flee and never return. I pray in its spot you would put peace. In its spot you would put joy. In its spot, God, you would put a clear mind. Power in the Holy Ghost, God, in Jesus' name I pray this tonight. Hallelujah. 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 We receive it tonight in Jesus' name. One more time, clap your hands unto the Lord. Oh, he's so good to us. i got faith believing tonight he can do anything. Nothing's impossible with him. 
Turn in your Bibles, if you will, to the book of Psalms, chapter 86. Thank you for being in the house of the Lord here tonight. A little bit cloudy and rainy on the outside. You know what? I wish, just wish the floodgates would open up in here. I wish a flood of the Holy Ghost would come in and... Oh! I wish it would sweep us away. Hallelujah. Oh. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, thank you, thank you. What a great time we had on Sunday. Thank you if you were here, if you... We're not here. We missed you. So glad you're back in service tonight. So ready for Brother Danny Kahn to be back in church. He had that operation on his foot. He's doing good. Uh, can't be here at this time, but I'm ready for him to be back in church. Uh, a lot of people sick. Blakely is doing much better. Thank you for your prayers for her. Uh, we still got some sickness going around, but God's good. God is good, and so I'm thankful to be in this house uh, let's begin at verse 1, if you will, in the book of Psalms, chapter 86. The Bible says, this is a, a prayer of David. He was praying this, and he said, Bow down thine ear, O Lord, and hear me, for I am poor and needy. Preserve my soul, for I am holy. O thou my God, save thy servant that trusteth in thee. Be merciful unto me, O Lord, for I cry unto thee daily. Rejoice, the soul of thy servant, for unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. For thou, Lord, art good and ready to forgive, and plenteous in mercy unto all them that call upon thee. Let me read that final verse one more time. For thou, Lord, art good and ready to forgive. For tonight, for the next little bit, I want to talk about this subject. God's ready to forgive. Are you? This will be a deep subject tonight. But I think it's going to help us. It's time to forgive. It's time to forgive. Will you lift, lay your Bibles down, lift your hands, ask God to speak to your heart tonight. Father, we love you. Thank you for what we feel here in this building. Thank you, God, for you being present. As Moses prayed, he said, God, if your presence does not go with us, we don't want to go. God, we don't want to go a day without your presence. I pray through the preaching of the Word of God that you would help uproot every root of unforgiveness in this house, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. You may be seated tonight. God is ready to forgive. That's what David said. He said, Lord, you're good and you are ready to forgive. You're prepared to forgive. You are anxious. Well, I don't know if anxious would be the right word. But, but, but you're, you're just sitting, waiting, longing to forgive. The book of 1 John chapter 1 verse 9 tells us about the Lord. It says, if we confess our sins, He is faithful and He is just to forgive us of our sins. What a promise this is. The only condition is confession. If you will confess your sins, God gave a promise. I'm faithful and I'm just to forgive us our sins. Remember with me tonight and think back of all the times, maybe even today for most of us, when He faithfully and justly forgave us of sins that we had no power to forgive ourselves. Not only does He forgive us of our sins, but He cleanses us from all unrighteousness that sounds like a good good God to me that's a great promise that we have uh, Peter 
came to Jesus in the book of Matthew chapter 18. Find it once here. And Peter came to him and said, Lord, how often shall I forgive my brother if he sins against me? How many times shall I forgive him? Seven times. I, I really believe Peter was being quite generous. Lord, I had the number seven in my mind. I was thinking about uh, over the course of my life, if he wrongs me, I'll give him seven times. But Jesus said unto him, I say not unto thee until seven times. Seven's not enough, Peter. But until 70 times seven. It blows my mind how 490 is nowhere close to the number seven. This is one individual, one brother. Didn't say the 490 is all the brothers combined. But that 490 is reserved for one man. Oh, I'm talking about a God who believes in forgiveness. A God that didn't mind emphasizing that if he fails you 490 times, even if it's the same exact sin, Peter, you got to forgive him. You know, our salvation, I believe most of you would agree with me tonight, our salvation is dependent. It's dependent on God's forgiveness of our sins. Why do you think Jesus Christ came? He was our atoning sacrifice. He was our high priest that was touched in every point as we've been touched. He was tempted just like we were. He was the perfect sacrifice, the, the perfect high priest. So I'll make this statement to you tonight. Forgiveness, this may hurt you. Forgiveness is not a recommendation. It's a requirement. For a born again, Holy Ghost filled Christian, forgiveness is not a recommendation. It is not, I recommend you to forgive. No, no, I, I require you to give. Because when I bought you, you became one of mine. I bought you to be like me. I taught you to talk like me and act like me. And if you get me, you get forgiveness. That's what I require out of you. Told him in the book of Mark chapter 11, he said, Therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, when ye pray... Believe that ye receive them and ye shall have them. That's an awesome promise. When you pray, just believe that it's already there. And that don't mean you go home and get down on your knees and say, God, I believe when I wake up in the morning, brand new 2024 Chevrolet 2500 sitting in my driveway. Because I'll be honest with you, people who really have the mind of God probably wouldn't pray that prayer anyway. Because somebody who has the mind of God prays things that God would have them pray. So I believe when you believe them, it says you shall receive them. But listen to the next verse. And when you stand praying, forgive. You can have whatever you want, believe for it and receive it. But when you're there praying, I, I got a requirement for you. I need you to learn how to forgive. In the middle of your asking, forgive. In the middle of your troubles, forgive. Why, God? He says, if you have ought against any, not ought against a brother, not ought against a friend, but, but, but he threw the word brother out of there because he said, if you have ought against anybody, he said, that your Father also, which is in heaven, may forgive you your trespasses. You come to me asking me to be clean, asking me to be washed, asking me to take away your iniquity and your sin, yet you stand here with unforgiveness in your heart, expecting to pray to a father that will forgive you. You're expecting me to do something that you're not willing to do. That he may forgive you your trespasses. But listen to this. But if you do not forgive, 
Somebody ought to hear this. If you do not forgive, neither will your Father, which is in heaven, forgive your trespasses. Do you want to be a recipient of forgiveness from the Father? You got to give forgiveness while you're down here. If you want to receive, you got to give. What does it say in Scripture? Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. If a man sows unforgiveness, he's going to reap unforgiveness. But, but, but if a man continually sows seeds of forgiveness, when he comes before the Father in petition, there's going to be forgiveness that's waiting in abundance for him. Why? Because he's ready to forgive you if you're ready to forgive others. He's ready to forgive you if you're ready to forgive others. He told them in the book of Matthew chapter 6 verse 9, he was teaching them to pray and he said, After this manner therefore pray ye, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And then he says this, and forgive us our debts. Didn't stop there. He said, as we forgive our debtors. God, I'm going to forgive everybody around me. And while I've done that, and I'm working on doing that, I'm going to ask you to forgive the debts that I owe to you. Then he says, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. He says, for if ye forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Thought about that sign you often see on people's land that says, No trespassing. Violators will be prosecuted. Don't go on there. You're going to get prosecution because you have trespassed on their land. Think about how many times we have trespassed. But because of God's mercy, we've avoided the prosecution. Because the judge showed us mercy. But we expect that from him. But when somebody trespasses against us, first thing we want to do is bring down the gavel on them. First thoughts, prosecution. Here to prosecute you. But the Bible says if you want to receive forgiveness, you got to receive, you got to give forgiveness to others. Uh, Jesus told a, a parable after he had talked to Peter about forgiving uh, his brother 70 times 7. And he said, Therefore is the kingdom of heaven likened unto a certain king which would take account of his servants. And when he had begun to reckon, one was brought unto him which owed him 10,000 talents. Somebody say, that's a lot of money. But for as much as he had not to pay, he didn't have it. didn't have the 10,000 and his Lord commanded him to be sold. I'm selling you, I'm selling your wife, I'm selling your children, and all that he had. And he said, you've got to make a payment. Got to pay me. But when the prosecution was happening, the servant fell down and worshipped him, saying, Lord, have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. One of the most touching things that you and I can receive or can give is to give forgiveness but to also ask forgiveness. If a man truly asks for forgiveness, you're really, if, you, if you're really being sincere, you're laying your pride and your ego and everything on the ground and saying, I have messed uh, I remember before I got in church, uh, 
we had a little get together out at my dad's house and there was a boy there, a boy I've known the majority of my life and uh, me and my brother were there and uh, just to summarize the story and I may have told y'all this before uh, we greatly, well we felt like he was wronging us at the time but we greatly wronged him wronged him so much he had some black eyes and, and a Probably a swollen face when he woke up the next morning. Wasn't proud of it. And so he was a, a pretty young boy. I mean, he was in high school. Maybe he was out of, even out of high school at that time. Could have been. But, you know, the boy had to go home to his daddy. And, of course, he knew where he had been the night before over at our house. He knew who lived there. I was there. And so he wasn't happy. I knew he wasn't. Well... A year, two, three years passed, a long span of time passed. And I got in church, I got filled with the Holy Ghost. Well, I knew this boy's dad very well, didn't have much communication with him. But I would notice when I, I would go to the shell station to get gas or get a refreshment, guess who would be there? He'd be there. And he would kind of look over at me, and I could feel that tension. Between me and him. I, I had been forgiven for what I had done to his son. God had washed that away. His blood had covered every bit of that. And uh, that passed over time and time again. I, wanted, I didn't know what to say to him. didn't know how to talk to him. And we started to go on a, a little youth retreat. And I had gotten off from work. And I went to the shell station. And guess who was there? He was there. Pumping his gas. You know what I said? I'm going to confront him. This young man walked up to him. I didn't really know what to say, but I just said, hey. And he said, hey, and he looked at me. I could tell, you know, there was still a bunch of tension there. I began to tell him what the Lord did for my life. And I began to apologize to him and ask him for his forgiveness. And as immediately when that happened, just like there was something that... That broke. You know what? When I see him out in town now, I'm able to wave my hand at him. He's able to wave his hand at me. Why? Because I put my pride on the ground. Put my ego down. And, 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 and because although I had been forgiven by God, the Bible commands us to try to live peaceably with all men. And if that takes us getting low to live peaceably with somebody, we got to do it, folks. Are, you, are we going to be the bigger people? Or are we going to let our pride stand between us bending a relationship with somebody? And so Jesus was saying here in this story that this man, uh, he, he was bringing down the hammer on this guy. And this guy came down and fell and worshipped him and began to beg him, have mercy on me. And when he did, it said the Lord was moved with compassion. And he loosed him and he forgave him the debt. But that same servant, which had been forgiven, went out and found one of his fellow servants, which owed him a hundred. Talk about petty. He owned, he owed ten thousand. Couldn't pay it. But he went to a man that owed him a hundred. And said, you pay me now or else. I'm putting you in jail. He laid hands on him, the Bible says. And he took him by the throat. And this man begged him. Said, please forgive me. I, I, I don't have it. Have patience with me. And I'll, I'll pay it all. But look what the Bible says. He would not. He went and cast him into prison. Till he should pay the same debt. Well, when that first Lord saw that, they had, they had given such forgiveness to this man. When he heard about it, he was enraged. And he went to this man and he said, I had compassion on you. And you couldn't even have compassion on this one. And he was wroth. And he delivered him to the tormentors till he should pay all that was due unto him. He says, so likewise shall my heavenly Father do also unto you. If ye from your hearts forgive not every one his brother, 
their trespasses. Pity. I want us to think about tonight how gracious God has been to us. Think of how much He has forgiven you for over the course of your life. Think about all your sins that would be piled up way past this roof. All of ours would fill this building probably ten times over. All the things that we have done and God was ready to forgive those. But how many times... Have we let something that wronged us and hurt us very severe or not severe? How many times have we let those things cause us to have hate and anger and frustration? Not because, hey, and, and, and they're not justified in doing it to us. And they may have never said, I'm sorry to you. They may have never repented. They may have never came to you and said, I've wronged you. I've hurt you. But who will be the bigger person? So likewise shall my heavenly Father do also unto you. It was once forgiven, but because you had not forgiveness for others, it's being applied to you again. I, I, I just came to talk to us tonight about forgiveness. Book of Acts chapter 7 tells us the story of a man by the name of Stephen. I referenced this on Sunday. He was preaching to a people. The Bible said this man was full of the Holy Ghost. And they came to him and began to gnash on him with their teeth. He said he being full of the Holy Ghost, he looked up steadfastly into heaven. And he saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God. And he said... Behold, I see the heavens open and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. And they cried out with a loud voice and stopped their ears and ran upon him with one accord. It goes on to tell us this. And they stoned Stephen, calling upon God and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Stones were flying, beating him down. He's begging God, would you please receive? My spirit, I'm ready to go. It's hurting me. It, 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 God, I, I never wanted to go through this. These stones are painful. Will you please receive my spirit? The Bible said he doesn't go anywhere. His spirit doesn't leave his body. Then Stephen does something else. The Bible says he kneeled down. After asking God to receive his spirit, he kneeled down and he cried with a loud voice. Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. Wouldn't you agree with me in this moment? There was probably some anger going on in Stephen. These men were stoning him. They were hurting him. Can you imagine the severe? I know you and I have been hurt, but have we ever been stoned with stones? It had to be in his heart at that time. God, this hurts. They're killing me. Receive my spirit. Something inside of him must have reminded him. I can't receive your spirit until you forgive. I can't get you out of here until you forgive, until you let it go, Stephen. I know it hurts. You're full of the Holy Ghost. You're a man of God. The Bible says, and when he cried with a loud voice, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. I forgive them. I don't even want you to punish them for it. It's wrong. It's not justified. They're killing an innocent man. But God, don't hold it against them. Some of you may say, God, I forgive them. The next verse you say is, God says, vengeance is his. He's going to take care of it. God's judgment's there. He'll take care of it. And oh, he will. What if he's waiting on us to say, God, don't worry about it. It's part of the process. If you want to hold it against them, go ahead. But hear my cry, God, I forgive them. While I'm here, I forgive them. 
because unforgiveness is not worth me not going to see you in eternity forever. And when he said, I forgive, lay it not to their charge, look what happened. Then he fell asleep. Rest came when he forgave. Rest came when he forgave. Do you want rest? Forgive him. Do you want peace? Forgive him. But Stephen was just following after one who came as our high priest, as our example. As the Bible says, as he was hanging there on the cross, Beaten, scarred, bloody, without sin. Jesus said, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. Some of us could argue they knew what they were doing. Uh, They knew they were putting that whip on my back. They knew it was a crown of thorn that was going. They knew there was no sin in me. They knew who I was when they spit in my face, when they mocked me. But he said, they don't know what they're doing, God. Let it depart from them. Don't leave it to their charge. Why? Because his love was greater than his pain. His love endured past the pain. Folks, I'm not telling you that we shouldn't have pain and hurt. I've been hurt by people. People have hurt me bad. People have hurt so many of us in so many different ways. And we've hurt a lot of people. I'm not denying that there's not pain and there's not hurt there. But I want to ask you this. Is our love greater than the pain? Is the love of God which dwelleth in us greater than the pain of the flesh that we are enduring just for a season? Or will we let that root of unforgiveness stay in us and say, they haven't asked my forgiveness yet, I'm not giving it. It Tells us in scripture, if they come to and repent, you got to forgive them. But what if? They don't come to you and repent. Let me give you some advice. Go ahead and get a jump start on them. Go ahead and forgive them. Go ahead and let it go. Why let it eat on us? Folks, people in the world, they know how to forgive. Somebody comes up to them, asks them for forgiveness, a lot of them. Man, I need to be Christians. They'll forgive. Talks about in Scripture, does, does people in the world that have friends, are they not good to them? Do they not do good things to them? That's why it then goes on to tell us that we're called to bless those who persecute us. Bless those who curse us. Do good to them who don't do good to us. He's called us to be above what the normal man would do. And when the normal man would not forgive, the Holy Ghost filled man is called to forgive. But we've got to purpose to do this. When I ask you this tonight, maybe, uh, maybe there's some things that's, that's happened in your world that have been very painful. Feel the sting of them. And I'm not saying the sting is not there even after you forgive. The sting is still there. But I want to ask us tonight, if we expect to be forgiven until the coming of the Lord Jesus, we are going to have to purpose in our heart to not let unforgiveness be a part of our lives. Because if we come to this altar tonight, we stand on God's word that says He's faithful and just to forgive us from all of our sins.
But we know he's faithful to forgive. But I want to ask you, are you and I faithful to forgive? Are we ready to forgive? Stand to your feet tonight. Search our hearts. God knows. He knows the hurt and the pain that many of us have endured and caused. Some of us have caused a lot and endured a lot. But if we can learn to truly forgive. And maybe the prayer needs to be something like this. God, I I don't know how I'm going to let it go. Maybe your prayer needs to be a little bit like Stephen's. God, don't hold it against him. Don't hold it against him. We know his judgments for sure. He's going to, he will hold things against them. But you know what that shows? That shows that you're letting it go. I'm forgiven. I'm moving on. I got more in my future than to worry about, continue to worry about hurting things in my past. Got a bright future ahead. Let me ask you tonight, what do you have in your heart that's still there tonight? Maybe you don't have anything. Maybe you've forgiven every person that's hurt you. But maybe there's somebody in the back of your mind right now. You say, God, I need to let that go. I need to let it go. It's holding me. It's hurting me. When I see them in public, that's all I think about. God, I've got to let it go. Because when you see me, you don't see my past, God. But when I see them, I, I see every word they've said about me. I've seen every knife that they've stabbed in my back. But God, I'm asking tonight that you would rid me of all the hurt, all the pain, all the unforgiveness and give me rest. Give me rest tonight. Can we come pray? If you feel it in your heart to come pray, maybe you want to pray in your pew. God, let no unforgiveness be in me tonight. Help me to forgive that I may be forgiven. My salvation is dependent on my ability to forgive others who have wronged me. Maybe it was a family member. Maybe it was a friend. Maybe it was a best friend. Maybe it was somebody that you looked up to. Somebody that you were connected to, interwoven with, and they've hurt you bad. Help us to forgive tonight, God. Help us to move forward. Oh, hallelujah. Get it out of our hearts. Get it out of our hearts, God.
come on, maybe it's somebody in this very room that have, has hurt you. They could be unaware of it or they could be very aware of it. Maybe you need to go to them tonight. Say, I forgive you. I forgive you. Let's move forward. Oh, hallelujah.